Now, here are three blocks, numbered one, two, three. Okay, no prizes for guessing what this guy is trying to do, because you know that this is a channel about debunking creationist crap, not a show and tell for geriatric actors. Hang on, wasn't this guy the idiot mayor in Jaws? You yell shark. We've got a panic on our hands on the 4th of July. Anyway, he's saying that evolution is like picking random numbers out of a box and hoping they'll all be in sequence. Before we look at that, is there anything else evolution is like? How many analogies can our Golden Crocodile nominees come up with? Welcome to the Casino of Life. It's like reading a book and finding spelling mistakes in it. Oh, wait a minute, I just thought of another one. Think of it like a tape recording. If we made millions of these ads and we had little text errors sprinkled in these ads, eventually we'd get a better ad. So think of this boat as your DNA. You know, over your lifetime, you'll accumulate a few errors in your DNA. Yeah, he's got a gun. Quick, back to the library. Phew. So evolution's like picking numbers out of a box, like working a slot machine, changing letters in a book or an ad, like recording your voice, and going postal on a rowing boat. Let's analyse these analogies. The one thing they all share, as you'd expect, is a complete misunderstanding of the mechanism of evolution. Taking 20 numbers out of a box and trying to get a complete sequence in order, well, how impossible is that? Now let's suppose that I could play at blinding speed and get all 20 blocks out in just one second, then do it again the next second and every second thereafter. Now the law of averages says that I can expect to get the 20 blocks out of the box in order at the rate of once every 77 billion years. And since this guy obviously hasn't got that long, the odds of him doing it are pretty impossible. So let's see if we can let him finish up in time for the early bird dinner at Del Boca Vista. What we'll do is use the same mechanism by which evolution occurs, natural selection. No, we don't need any supernatural power like peeking into the box. Natural selection works by selecting those traits, in this case numbers, that are advantageous, fit to survive, and rejecting those that aren't. That's what survival of the fittest is all about. So we pick the numbers at random, sure. If the first one out of the box is a 6 or a 12, it gets rejected and goes back. If it's a 1, then that's an advantageous trait that survives. We then move on to the second number, and so on. If we pick one number every second, as the video suggests, then it would only take 20 seconds at the most to get our first correct number, number 1. It'll take 19 seconds at the most to get the next number in the sequence, number 2, and 18 seconds at the most to get number 3. This means it'll take the mayor of Amity Island just 346 seconds, less than 6 minutes, to get all the numbers in sequence. That's very different to 77 million years. And that's the difference between natural selection and natural chance. Day one! <laughs> Tina, tell him how many times he needs to do that to win the prize. 250. That's right, folks. And all in the correct order. But that's impossible. If this was a random process, yes. But now let's apply the rules of natural selection, which says that beneficial traits are kept and non-beneficial ones are rejected. Every time a slot machine comes up with a little bacterium, it stays there and the wheels that didn't show a bacterium roll again. If there are six symbols on the rollers, each of these wheels will come up with a bacterium one time out of six. If it takes ten seconds for each pull on the slot machine, that means it'll take about a minute for each wheel to register a bacterium. And since each wheel is running at the same time, and all 250 machines are running at the same time, it'll take just one minute for every single one to hit the jackpot. This is why the casinos don't let you select which symbol to hold on every wheel, Apparently, they understand evolution. So you put text in this and you, and you mutate it. So you start out with an, uh, something that looks like this, and then you do one mutation. Do you see the mutation? Yeah. Yeah. Easy pr protection. The I turned into a zero. And then after five mutations, there's more stuff that gets screwed up. This one is my favourite. I couldn't download the video, so I'll explain what this guy is driving at. He's showing a website called randommutation.com. 
You put in a phrase, press a key, and one of the letters gets randomly changed. Eventually, you'll end up with unintelligible gibberish. Conclusion, mutations cause evolution to fail. Well, the first thing to note is that mutations aren't thought to be the main drivers of evolution, as I explained in my video Natural Selection Made Easy on the Potola 54 channel. But let's go with this analogy anyway, and assume that the speaker means natural variation. The premise is that if you take the word English and then change one of the letters, representing a new trait in an offspring, and then make another change and another, representing successive changes in successive generations, you eventually end up with gibberish. But now let's apply the principle of natural selection to this process. We make the changes at random, as before, but we select those new traits that are fit and reject those that aren't. What do we get? English, 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 English. Ah, English. Out of four attempts, we can reject the first three, but keep the fourth. What do you mean it's not a word? You mean it's not an existing word? No, it's not. But the process of evolution doesn't change organisms to make organisms that already exist, except in rare cases called parallel evolution. Evolution makes new organisms. That's why it's called evolution. A new word has evolved out of the old one. So we select our new word English and make another round of random changes. English, 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 yes, that's a word. And if you disagree, you're obviously not familiar with the Angles, a Germanic people who invaded Britain in the 6th century and spoke a language called English. Yes, I've played a little trick, because in showing how the word English could change through randomly generated and naturally selected letter changes into the word Anglisk, in reality it was the word Anglish that evolved into English. The analogy between language evolution and biological evolution is actually quite a good one, as a lot of linguists have noted. New words tend to be kept and spread if they're useful and die out if they're not. Words change, which means they evolve. As for the guy in the boat, I don't know what he's trying to prove. Hey, if this boat's the theory of evolution and I shoot holes in it, they're just like the theory.